I don't want to go into too many details about this episode. It wasn't too much. It really, really wasn't that much. But the Bad Batch episode four, Cornered, is the shortest episode so far of this series. I'm sure they're not going to get like shorter and shorter. I'm sure we're going to have episodes that you know are longer than 26 minutes, or it's actually less than 26 minutes because of the credits. But the Bad Batch episode four, Cornered, is literally just a Bad Batch and a supply run. So once again, they they land their ship on some planet and they have to repair their ship or whatever they were doing and get supplies. So not a not a whole lot on that story front so like it's literally just them fixing up their ship you know dealing with problems on this planet i don't even remember what it was called but yeah not a whole lot happens but the episode starts off again they they get to this planet i don't remember what it's called i only watched it once they pay off this guy so he doesn't tell anybody where they are of course and then they go off to get supplies and while they're off to get supplies the guy who they were talking to here of course you always got these scummy people here in star wars who are always looking to get some money or some credits and this guy calls fennec shand from the mandalorian so we knew she was going to be in the show so she was literally the star of this episode if she wasn't in this episode this episode probably would have been terrible like honestly terrible now i'm not saying the bad batch in general is a bad show all shows have their duds but this one Without her, it really, really would have been pretty bland. It really would have been bland. But she was in this episode, and it was really cool to see uh, the voice actress, the the you know the character voiced by the actress in The Mandalorian. Uh, really cool to see her come back, and yeah, I really like the character. She's really, really cool. But uh, she's after Omega, so I mean, you can already see that they're tying in this type of Mandalorian style story where you know they're after the child that they're protecting, and Hunter is like uh, Din Djarin, you know, in the Mandalorian. A lot of people are making comparisons now with the Mandalorian, especially with Omega and Hunter and Din Djarin and Grogu. You know, we're seeing that comparison now, and that seems to be kind of what they're doing but uh fennec shan is now after the bad batch and more importantly omega and they're out on the supply run uh echo is pretending to be a droid because he obviously can and i don't know they need credits so they sell him off for credits to get supplies or whatever they were doing and of course he can get himself out of that situation and he does later in the episode i'm not going to go too much into it but he gets a bunch of droids to help him fix the ship that's literally what they do but on the other side of the story here you got fennec shan coming into the story here uh omega runs off like like literally they they did the the child running off in the storyline where they run off and run into trouble or danger and that's literally what they did omega runs into fennec shand and fennec shand is literally after omega so of course you know where this story is going to end up going she plays it off as she's like a nice person you know helping out at first and then once hunter finds omega they get into a blaster fight and you can presume where this ends up going uh, you know, it's a heated interaction here, and she puts her helmet on as her iconic helmet from The Mandalorian. So, really cool. I really like Fennec Shan. Fennec Shan is a really cool character. Uh, some of the stuff that she does in this episode, though, are a little weird. You know, I, I don't like how they did some of her, not necessarily her character, but like the Bad Batch in this episode. Uh, I don't know. I don't necessarily like it, but Fennec Shan in this episode is really cool. Really, really cool. But. Of course, you know, it goes wrong and they got to chase down Fennec Shan who has Omega captive and essentially this whole chase leads up to some antenna tower or whatever and Omega is hanging off the edge and then they fall off and then they get into this high speed chase type of situation kind of looks like Coruscant in a way, you know, with the city and the flying, you know, hover vehicles and whatever they got and we've seen some of this in the trailers as well and like the shot of hunter on the on his speeder so that's kind of where that check came from but in the speed chase of course you know the fighting fennec shan i got a lot of shots of fennec shan here coolest part of the episode in my opinion uh very cool to see her in it but essentially they chase down fennec shan who has omega and in the end 
They end up stopping her. They blow her off of her. Or they blow up her ship that she had stolen and crash her to the ground. She's injured and they save Omega. So that's this shot right here. Her ship blew up. They got away from her. And it seems like she's going to kind of be this side antagonist in this series now going forward. Uh, along with Crosshair and the Empire. So the Crosshair and the Empire are like the bigger threat that's looming. And then you have this side, you know, story here of Fennec Shand and someone who has hired her to go after Omega. Now, I would assume, one would assume maybe it's like the Kiminoans going after Omega because she's quite important to Kamino. And that could be, but I don't, you know, it, it, they really hint at the end of the episode that she's really uh, working with somebody to find Omega and I don't necessarily know who a lot of people are thinking maybe she's already interacting and maybe speaking with Boba Fett I don't know what Boba Fett would have to do with this I know he's not that old yet I know he's still kind of probably like a young adult right now so it'd be really cool to see Boba Fett and her interact in this show I think it'd be really cool but uh, at the end essentially she pays off the one guy that screwed them over in the beginning and he didn't necessarily help her completely, but she still paid him off. And she told him to let him let her know if she ever sees if he ever sees the Bad Batch again. And that's that's kind of how the episode ends. She's after the Bad Batch, and uh, it was just a supply run gone wrong. That's literally how this episode went. And the only interesting thing was Fennec Shan. In all honesty, Fennec Shan was the only interesting storyline in this episode. The rest of it is just the Bad Batch off on a random adventure. Now, the one thing I did want to talk about with the Bad Batch that I didn't like what they did in this episode is they really made them look weak. Like, if you guys know in the last episode, they had Wrecker knocked out by this creature on that moon or planet or whatever they were on. And in this one, Fennec Shan literally knocks out Wrecker and Hunter in the span of this chase that they're on. Wrecker goes out and tries to help and tries to stop Fennec. And in, like, one blow against, like, the side of a wall... Uh, Wrecker is like knocked out for a second, you know, from Fennec Shand. And I know Fennec Shand is a highly skilled fighter in Star Wars. We see that in The Mandalorian. And uh, I'm not against that. I'm really not against that. I'm more against how, like, it's this is literally Wrecker. You put Wrecker against her, and Wrecker is like the super strong mutated clone. And you're going to have him get knocked out in one hit. It just seems a little unrealistic, in my opinion. Like, this is the Bad Batch. This isn't just like a normal clone. So it's a little strange, but that's kind of the only big gripe I had with the episode. Other than that, it was pretty boring storyline-wise besides Fennec. And I'm very excited to see more of Fennec Shan. She was really cool in this episode. Uh, I, I'm really starting to like this character. I really, really am. Uh, I always like to see these bounty hunter characters, and I really love the crossover between the Mandalorian and her coming into the Bad Batch. So I'm interested to see some of her storyline from the past and see where it goes. But the Bad Batch episode four, uh, I don't know. I don't like rating numbers. I haven't done the number ratings in this, but let's say out of ten, maybe a four or five out of ten this episode. It wasn't that good, but it was okay. You know, it was all right. But that was episode four, Cornered. Uh, hopefully next week picks up the storyline a little bit. I really want to get into Rex and what they're going to do with Rex. Because I know they're going to run into Rex eventually. We did see him in the trailer. We still haven't seen him. So that shot in the trailer we haven't seen yet. Hopefully we'll see Rex soon. But right now, this is where we're at. I, I think there's rumored like 14 or 16 episodes. So we'll get there eventually. I'm sure it'll pick up. But right now... These have been really some really slow episodes since the premiere episode, which was fantastic. And I really like the last one, last one as well. But the second one and the fourth one are they're kind of up there as eh, you know. But um, overall, though, I really do like the show, and I think it's got some really cool stuff coming. But this episode in particular wasn't that fantastic, but it was okay. 